Hi everyone. I'm just not talking on purpose because I just wanted this to sink in this picture, and uh, that is kind of going to also set the agenda for the day. I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you for joining. Venki, how are you? Yes, today it's me after a very long time. Welcome. Hello, Yashi. How are you? Rubble solutions. Yes, it is a good idea. I know it is a little late in India. Um, you guys are probably wrapping up uh, dinner and about to hit the sack. So I totally don't blame you. So please watch it at your own leisure. Abhay Rajasthani, Radhe Radhe. How are you, sir? Sujata Ji, thank you so much. Common man. Hello. Hello, hello. Okay, so I have a short uh, and simple agenda today and uh, just going to explore a lot of what Sushant was reading, was thinking and was actually trying to, you know, convey through his actions, um, especially around books, uh, especially around, uh, you know, his intellectual ideas that he was trying to, you know, no matter what interview we are watching, it's just like a treasure trove of ideas. And so it's just so exciting. So uh, I just want to explore a little bit of that. Sujata ji, Judy ji, and Saloni ji, thank you so much. Uh, I've been okay. Thank you. Thank you. Still a long way to go, but, uh, you know, just uh, life goes on. So thank you so much. So I'm going to keep this shorter also, just... Uh, so, okay, so look at this picture right here. And uh, if you see, uh, this reminds me of his uh, Asian Paints video where he just takes us around a tour and uh, no matter which room he goes to, there is always a big stack of books all around him. Um, somewhere, sometimes in the background, sometimes in the, you know, in his vicinity or sometimes he's holding it and just like musing through them. And uh, if you see this book in particular, Sapiens, they're also coming up with a very, very nice graphic novel this October. Um, Sapiens is uh, Yuval Noah Hariri. He's uh, one of the most intellectual people in the world, probably in the top uh, 50 in the world uh, currently. He's, I believe, not even 45 years old. But Sapiens by Yuval Noah Hariri is, uh, you know, it's a must read. And so are some of his books, which are uh, 21st Lessons for the 21st Century. That book is also equally great. So uh, just by looking at, uh, you know, what his priorities are and uh, is your neighbor a zombie? So all these books and how he surrounds himself, you know, you, you can tell a person by looking at his ecosystem. That's what they say, right? So uh, you can see what his priorities are, obviously, surrounding himself by what matters the most. And uh, if you see the thumbnail, um, I also added a word uh, here. Let me see if I can pull it up. So I called him uh, um, Meta Mind. So what I mean by that is, let me show you. Let me do this. So this is what I uh, called him. Um, you know, he it's one of those uh, Meta Minds that we rarely see. Uh, he's kind of exploring his own thoughts, his own mind, uh, and he is trying to verbalize it through his uh, Twitter. So I was listening to one of his interviews and where he says how he comes up with his tweets is, you know, whatever is on his mind at that moment, he tries to verbalize them and uh, just convey it through his thoughts. So, um, you know, I'm sure you know a lot of celebrities who don't, uh, who copy and paste whatever their uh, PR is sending them, even without uh, cross-checking for any typos or any kind of, you know, they even seem to have uh, things like, uh, please copy and paste it on your Twitter <laughs> handle kind of a thing. 
so if you know what i mean so these but um, the person like sashant you know how he was always making sure that he is conveying his thoughts and feelings in the most articulate way um of course uh, for people like us we can't understand his uh, you know intellect so sometimes it's kind of it feels a little mysterious and all that um so just again once again going back to this picture i just want to you know when i was exploring about this whole thing i would like to still call this these kind of sessions discovery sessions because i am very much uh, by no means an expert on uh, what he might have been thinking or dreaming or what his big ideas for us uh, for our collective humanity might have been um so i would definitely say that uh, this is a uh, discovery phase for me and i was thinking instead of doing research um on him in private how about i just open this up here and uh, see what you guys are thinking have you also heard of uh, any of his books or articles or ideas or what you guys think about how futuristic he already was uh, you know back in 2018 and 2019 he was already starting to talk about coding ai and ml uh in a very very scalable fashion like he was talking about uh, expanding it to the world he was talking about giving free education to children uh he was you know one of his interviews he says uh, i think it is the asian paints interview i'm not sure but it is again one of his very popular interviews so he says that uh, you know he wants to be um you know, what are his top 3 recommendations for books uh, and he actually doesn't name uh any one in particular in that interview he just says that you know one must be reading school books religiously uh and uh, you know it, it reminds me of that interview where he says uh, he's uh, uh, just a few years ago i believe this was uh, fresh off of uh, his manav's role or um, he might be still in that manav's role where he says that oh i don't read uh, books that much Uh, or something to that effect and he says that uh, ah are you talking about ncert physics or some books like that ha wo to i always read them and all that so he jokes about that and in just a few span of years he just becomes this intellectual bibliophile and just surrounding himself with books everywhere and that to not the, your average regular chick flicks or uh, you know all those kind of so p kind of novels or anything these are actually really books that uh, need uh, some serious you know thought and everything so so again one of his uh, favorite authors this uh, gentleman who is kurt vonnegut and i think he says it in one interview where he is like a uh, huge fan of him and he says Kurt Vonnegut is one of those guys you know i i read his uh, i read his books um growing up and also you know when i was in my 20s and 30s uh, just to try to understand why he was so widely popular and everything and uh, slowly over the years i have found out what is so great about him I, at least for me what was just so fascinating about him and uh, kurt wanna gets uh, especially this uh, sorter house 5 uh, it's like a world war 2 uh, kind of uh, half memoir uh, half uh, fiction kind of uh, you know he weaves it in a way where the protagonist is actually trying to you know he he weaves it in a way that the book feels so chaotic uh, but yet if you observe you know how he is uh, just uh, the and he says at one point of time in the book that you are present in all moments of your life you know just to think about it just to elaborate on that one right uh, let's do a side board here just want to think i just want us to just his fascination with uh, so you are present 
So just a thought, you know, for all of us, why Sushant might be liking a person like Kurt Vonnegut and his writings is because you are present um, in all the moments of your life. Of your life. So I feel like, um, you know, in Slaughterhouse 5, uh, there Kurt Vonnegut writes to that effect that uh, we are somehow present in all the moments of our life because whether we are thinking about the past or future, we are present. So I feel like, you know, especially for me, because I am um, heavily into mindfulness uh, and meditation practices, I, I, I like the word. I just love the word and the concept that, um, yes, it is us, whether it is in the past or uh, in the future, contemplating what we are going to be doing. We are always present with the idea of ourselves. And uh, that's something I just wanted to go around with you. And, uh, you know, the, the book itself is just so non-linear. Uh, it kind of uh, is like, you know, he keeps jumping between his past and his future and, of course, his present um, and his life, autobiographical, semi-autobiographical, actually. and. Uh, I can see how Sushant would have liked something like this because, um, you know, he's uh, he's one kind of a person who will probably embrace uh, why life is chaotic and even in that chaos there can be beauty that can be found. So I think that's uh, one of the things. And then. Um, so just uh, that was one of the things that I wanted to talk about. His one of his favorite. Uh, authors, Kurt Vonnegut. And the Slaughterhouse Five, if anybody wants to read or any of his other uh, novels, uh, Kurt Vonnegut's, they have been adapted as uh, graphic novels um, for children or just uh, for youth and everything. And there, any form of Kurt Vonnegut is great. Uh, you just have to stay with the novels. You know, it will take a while for you to get sucked into the narrative. But uh, it's uh, once you get into it, like, science fiction-y kind of, uh, you know, alternative universe kind of, you know, things. And just so metaphysical and everything that Sushant would have definitely liked. You know, a person um, who likes astrophysics or uh, spirituality, he can, you know, he thinks of, uh, he, he's a person who had a piece of uh, land on the moon. So, <laughs> um so just uh, wanted to, as I was doing some research on him and his thoughts and ideas and everything, I wanted to open this as a discovery phase kind of a thing for anybody. If you have any ideas, uh, please share with them and I'll keep expanding them on uh, future sessions because this is something uh, that I want to, you know, uh, think of my own dream projects, one of my dream projects, uh, because I want to be able to decode how uh, Sushant was thinking, uh, even if it's one percent, I will consider myself successful. So, so yeah, just in a, so I keep thinking about his life and uh, how, in a matter of years, he was just able to, you know, master reading so much and that too intellectually. So many uh, intellectually challenging books. Uh, one of the one of these ones, which was okay, this one. I think this is one of the top five that he had mentioned. And if you see the names of all these people here mentioned, uh, the it's a collection of all these books. And if you can see um, Steve Pinker, Richard Dawkins, Daniel Kahneman, he's a Nobel Prize laureate so uh, and uh, finance uh, expert, so Brian Eno, Richard Thaler, uh, I believe Richard Thaler is also a Nobel Prize winner. And V.S. Ramchandran is, oh my gosh, I cannot even tell you the most underrated, the most underrated person, uh, neural, neuroscientist in the world, V.S. Ramachandran. I'm just, I'm a huge fan of his. And Lisa Randall, Craig Venter, Matt Ridley. And if you see the collection of like how they have editorialized and put all this together, um, 
and this is literally new age thinking uh, if you can you know the they draw parallels between computational thinking um, the processing speed of machines versus uh, our uh, you know our brain that has evolved over millions and millions of years it's just a fascinating you know insights into all these legends these thought leaders of the current world that we live in uh, and how we are uh, it's like this you know we are living in two different uh, you know we are living online and we are living offline lives right now so if you don't understand the technology world out there you know you are definitely not um, you know and you get carried away by what technology offers seems to be offering you uh, you might not be using your potential to the full so and uh, that is where understanding your brain is so much important and i think um, sushant even though we were like uh, at that um at 2017 2018 2019 we were still not completely with grips into understanding the technology disruption around us he was already much ahead of the time and he is he being in the kind of um, industry <laughs> that is not really known for its intellectuals uh, sorry to say there might be some bollywood folks who might be really smart uh, i can't think of anybody at the top of my head but uh, yeah just uh, so some of the books and like, once again i just want to put this up and then slowly what we will do is in these kind of sessions we will just weave through all the different kinds of uh, things he is going to be talking okay so let me do one thing i have opened up his uh, okay so somebody in my wednesday sessions here in our wednesday sessions here had mentioned intoxilectual intoxilectual book club of sushant and they asked me to decode it and the minute um, somebody mentioned it please mention it here in the comments if you are the person who told me that i am so grateful for you i can't even tell you so this uh, if you see of course there are only 40 posts uh, on twitter where i can see his account here and anybody wants the links i can post them i'll be happy to post them there right here so if you see uh, the book club you know account managed by sushant singh rajput and uh, this one the intel intoxilectual book club on instagram so just walk through for the next few minutes If anybody wants to explore some of the books that are here, little by little, I just want to, you know, of course, uh, wherever uh, he is, he is always channeling his imagination and his curiosity. And you know, uh, I I feel like uh, if anybody was there in the industry who understood the value of time and who was trying to do the most uh, with. all the time he had like any spare time he had uh, i think that was uh, sushant so you know curiosity to read books and uh, curiosity and imagination you know the, those are the two things that separate us from from machines and if we just understand that and that's also my mission to be able to uh, teach kids that we cannot just outsource everything our uh, imagination and our curiosity and our creativity to machines because that is what makes us human so again so i can't read uh, some of the books that he is reading like i can't see the titles of them but uh, i have a fairly decent list of the books that he was reading from all kinds of sources so if you know any books that um, you have validated and uh, you have researched i would love for you to please tell me so this one again one of the you know metacognition as we were talking about metacognition like how sushant was so superior at thinking about his own thinking um i think that uh, you know this one the emotion machine and uh, common sense thinking artificial intelligence and the future uh, of the human mind again where he is saying that uh, he's talking about uh, how machine how we can make machines think 
and uh, what all this uh, noise about machine learning and artificial intelligence and all this is. Uh, again, uh, this is a book from Sushant Singh Rajput's bookshelf. Yeah, I think he mentions this as one of his talk books as well, somewhere, The Emotion Machine. And uh, understanding and labeling our emotions is so critical for us to arrive at our baseline quickly so that we can um, prime ourselves for learning. So that is the key, right? So if you can, you know, when you're angry or frustrated or sad or even happy, you don't really necessarily are on the baseline for um, a good positive, you know, outcome. You're just like going to do something uh, with your emotions. You don't fully, you know, nurture uh, that idea and you just are going to be predisposed to be like very short tempered or like quickly you want to get some things done in your excitement or happiness. So understanding our emotions and especially um, the word is called sensei. I don't know if uh, how many of um, you have been uh, able to hear that word. It is uh, sensei robots are coming. So sensei robots are, you know, they're saying that uh, all robots need is just uh, emotions and feelings and then they will overpower us. So if we cannot let that happen, so it is important for us to be able to read uh, our own feelings, label them, process them so that we are prime ourselves for higher learning and personal growth and all that. So um, this is a great book. Um, I have to be honest, I either speed read, um, I either Blinkist, uh, there is a Blinkist app uh, which condenses everything. Uh, I do Spark Notes uh, and I do podcasts. I don't do uh, full books, especially if they are nonfiction and if they are listicles, I just uh, try to quickly condense and get the juice out of it quickly uh, because I just can't, uh, yeah, I don't have the time and I want to read as much as I can before I die. So that's my goal. <laughs> Uh, Peter Thiel is also one of the most superior thinkers of our uh, world right now. Peter Thiel, uh, you should watch videos of his. And uh, so he's, uh, you know, he gives, uh, especially I like his uh, work a lot and his podcast a lot because I am an entrepreneur and, uh, you know, how uh, it's almost like how can you make yourself uh, failure resistant, you know, make competition irrelevant. Uh, these are all these kind of things and ideas that uh, Peter Thiel is. Peter Thiel is just unbelievable. So you can just uh, uh, even <laughs> one half an hour video, just like Sushant. So like if you can watch Peter Thiel's, you will just get so much value out of it. It's just amazing. So again, this is also a book from his bookshelf. Not surprising at all. <laughs> there you go. Um, I think he has a chunky book here. Um, don't know if this is any kind of uh, anything related to Cobain. But uh, if you guys know Kurt Cobain, uh, you might <coughs> kind of know about his, uh, he was a rock star. He was part of the Nirvana rock group. And... Uh, you know, he he oh, he abuses drugs and uh, at 27, he just uh, kills himself. So uh, at 27, he was uh, way ahead of his, you know, his music, his lyrics and uh, the way he was. He was kind of a torture genius, Kurt Cobain. Um, and I'm not surprised that, you know, uh, his music or anything must have been inspiring to Sushant and... Uh, um, Reminds me of Sylvia Plath as well. Sylvia Plath, uh, uh, Sushant Singh re read a lot of uh, Sylvia Plath's poetry um, and her autobiographical, I think there, is, there are a lot of books, uh, semi-autobiographical of uh, Plath. Um, if you want to read, uh, she also, unfortunately, um, she's kind of a tortured genius kind of a thing. And she also, she puts, um, Kind of a sad ending just like Cobain she actually ends up uh, killing herself by putting her head in the oven while her children are sleeping uh, in the next uh, room so she was a fairly young mom 
but she wrote so much in like a span of 5 years or something just that people who live up to 70 or 80 don't even do as much so um kurt cobain and sylvia plath and all these people um sushant red because they are geniuses in their own right their writings and uh, just uh, unbelievable so yeah so that's uh, and if you notice uh, i want to also do a session on <laughs> sushant's t-shirt sometime because it's just so i don't think he, you know i wear a lot of free t-shirts that i keep getting <laughs> because i'm like ha ah, you know chalo free t-shirt hai chalo pehn lete hain whatever right so but he is like uh, everything he does has a reason that's what i feel like um, yeah so so yeah this guy uh, tim ferris uh, is one of the juggernauts uh, of uh, lately i don't know he's just uh, i feel like he has become a little repetitive uh, and a little too slow for me <laughs> maybe because i speed read and everything seems to be in slow motion but uh, timothy ferris is again uh, you know some of this uh, the tribe of mentors the first one the 4 hour work week um, is much more powerful actually than uh, tribe of mentors i think uh, tribe of mentors he was just uh, juicing uh, he was milking his uh, popularity in this that's what i feel like timothy ferris but nonetheless um, if you are interested in uh, extreme personal development i highly highly recommend you to please uh, check out tim ferris's 4 hour work week and some of the things that when he interviews all these um, people you know famous people of each industry you will just notice that uh, whether they are talking about their regrets or their life or their uh, just anything uh, that they are telling as life lessons for us uh, some of them are just fascinating you know i remember reading um, about a parent who was so obsessed with his career Uh, that gentleman he ends up uh, saying you know the children when you are when they are at your house uh, just enjoy them just uh, you know career nobody uh, will ever say nobody will ever regret that uh, i didn't work too hard you know what i mean so some of very thoughtful you know life advice has come out of uh, tim ferris's interviews and his podcast is just super popular um you can check it out and lately for me i think i've consumed so much of him that i am like okay i want to explore new things so he's kind of uh, become a little repetitive for me just because i have been following for a long time so okay so um i don't know man this book right here so everything i i like but this one i was trying to get into it a few years ago honestly just because uh, this um, gentleman who wrote it uh, uh, he is uh, don't remember the name now i can uh, quickly search but i believe that he was uh, uh, he was the guy who found out um, our was instrumental in finding out more about the dna discovery and the double helix and all that stuff so uh he was a very very famous biologist and this one is an old book actually like i believe like 40 years old or something like that uh and this is again uh, it is memoir uh, it's a memoir and uh, i don't know because he wrote it uh, he is german or something he tries to write it in english which is like it's not easily i can't read it so well so i did not really get into this book but it is very very popular nonetheless so i mean you're welcome to check it out um, and you know one day maybe we can have a debate on this so and this one again uh, you know wherever he is sushant's home library look at that volumes and volumes of uh, books and just happy again you can tell the priority of a person by just looking at his uh, you know his surroundings right like what do you need a book and what do they say about books it's like a present that you can keep opening up over and over again so um yeah he is in a happy place just hanging out with his books and 
Yeah, who taught us that books are our best friends, yeah. It's a present that keeps giving over and over again. Um, I think this is some kind of a drawing uh, book, like illustrations and like how to draw or some kind of a book. I remember him using it somewhere. Um, and you know, he being the ambidextrous guy, uh, what can we you know, expect from him? I'm sure he was learning literally to draw left and right. So, uh, yeah, and he's just so cheerful and happy and just relaxed. So exciting to always see his pictures like this, where he's just with his childlike, you know, just happiness. So exciting to see it. Oh, this one, um, I believe this one has been converted for every realm um, Right now, I think for children, they have something for children now. They have young something for adults. Uh, there's something for parents. They have something for everyone. Like brain rules is so popular um, that I believe. Um, but somehow for me, I feel like, um, of course, there is uh, uh, anecdotal evidence to everything uh, that uh, John Medina says here. But uh, somehow I... In, no, in the non-fiction personal development category, I just feel like, uh, you know, these are like a little exercise. Um, don't, um, you know, use your uh, s drink water or um, sleep well. And uh, female and male uh, brains are different and all these things uh, and chapters and chapters about them and all that. It's okay, TK. It's it doesn't have to be a big gigantic book. That's what. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, people want uh, research backed stuff. So I'm sure that is why it is a very big chunky book because people just don't want to blindly believe that these are the things that you can do to take care of your brain health. So I think a lot of um, you know, there's a lot of talk about memory. Um, how to exercise and take care of your brain, how the importance of uh, sleep is, uh, and how men and women are wired differently, and all those things. So this one is uh, also uh, a great book. Um, I would, again, <laughs> once again, rather just uh, listen to a podcast and try to understand uh, any takeaway tips for me. So that's just my style, but uh, you might get into it. And there's a lot of anecdotal evidence and and this book is also great. And if you, um, this is kind of similar to what Jordan Peterson um, also wrote recently, like a few years ago. Uh, it's called 12 Rules of uh, Chaotic Life or Making Meaning of Life or something like that. So he wrote, so Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson is also a Canadian based thought leader and he is uh, one of Sushant's favorite uh, um, thought leaders. He has mentioned it many times. And Jordan Peterson actually wrote this 12 rules for life, finding order in chaos or something like that. So there, um, there also, it's a listicle book nonetheless. But um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's kind of long and tedious and everything. But uh, we, no matter what he's talking about in that book, he's always like uh, self-care, you know, uh, just don't fall into the comparison trap. Just uh, do what is important and uh, useful for you. Like all those things uh, that we often neglect. So 12 Rules of Life by Jordan Peterson. Also, I recommend if you guys are interested in uh, doing that. So once again, <laughs> robotics, philosophy, sacred geometry. Uh, you guys might know what sacred geometry is. Uh, if you, any one of you has explored any mandalas or anything like that. Uh, let me talk about mandalas just in one second. I'll just look at the comments. I'll take a break here and look at some comments and then we'll continue. Mm, let's see, one second. Okay. So I'm looking, one second, I'll just highlight this picture while we are talking about, okay. Or this picture. 
Okay, so Judy, Santosh Kumar Singh Ji, how are you? Very nice, Samir. Samir Ji, PM, how are you? Okay. Okay, Judy Ji, what a coincidence. I was checking the last book he read loaded while trying to get it from the library first before ordering it. Oh, wow, okay, very nice. Uh, I'm going to check this book out. I think I've heard about it. I'm not sure. I'll check my notes. Thank you for that, Judy. Um uh, Shanti, how are you? Ushma ji, hello, Aditi ji, VG Sudhi, hello, hello world, VP. He suggested uh, meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Uh, yeah, exactly. So this is one of my actually, where is my meditations? It's meditations is oh I moved it to the living room, but uh, meditations is one of my top five, ten books in the world, definitely. It's just uh, in the Daily Stoic by Marcus Aurelius, yes. And Marcus Aurelius, uh, he being the king, and he discusses... So uh, talking about Marcus Aurelius, we need an entire episode, actually. He's just... Uh, um, yeah, and uh, I'm not surprised that Sushant actually suggested meditation in the Daily Stoic because Marcus Aurelius is one of the legends of Greek philosophy and... Uh, uh, Greek personal development, personal development that came from that, uh, you know, time. So just not surprised at all. Okay, so I'm going to have to note these. One of the books his brother-in-law referred to him, which he mentioned he would read, is The Lucifer Effect by Philip Zimbardo. I'm thinking fast and slow by Daniel Kahneman. Okay, so The Lucifer Effect. Okay, I'm going to check that out. And Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. I think uh, there is a reason why Thinking Fast and Slow is one of the legendary books on how the mind works and how, how our decision-making process works in general. So I think uh, this is definitely a must read for any, again, it's very, very, it's a very big book, uh, but the main concepts are thinking fast and thinking slow is uh, how do you make decisions intuitively and how do you make decisions like quickly so usually he says that uh, whatever our gut says you know like the first thing that comes to our mind is usually what is the best thing that for us but uh, sometimes what we do is then we start over analyzing it make it such a tedious process this whole thinking and we just uh, yeah, so I, I like the book. And of course, Daniel Kahneman being Daniel Kahneman, he is one of the, he's a Nobel Prize laureate and Nobel laureate. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's great. So, okay. I'm going to look at uh, Saloni G. He was a secret, always wanting to learn more in genius and real science. He wanted to gather so much. You know, could not imagine. Yeah, how much knowledge and information he had. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, his, uh, you know, his mind seems to be a treasure trove. And uh, yeah. Uh, Monica ji, welcome. Bhaskar ji. Okay. So Saloni ji, okay. So his mind was uh, like a saint, such uh, beyond the boundaries. Yeah, absolutely. And he was pushing and he was kind of rewriting the whole, uh, you know, boundaries, creating the boundaries. Sorry, I've just been, I just hid myself there in the background. Okay. So funny um, that reading in this book now about being in present. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Monika ji, yeah, my name is Rachna. And uh, yes, thank you guys for uh, answering, Monika ji. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Saloni ji. I think, uh, you know, he was always living in the present. He was living in the moment. Yes, so that's why... Uh, Nobel, no, Nobel, did I? Yeah. I'm sorry, did I misspell it? Yeah. So, okay. As a Nobel, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, let's see. Nipunji, Abhirji, welcome, welcome. Yeah. Truly, yeah, these books go over my head too. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, some of them are like just super intellectual and uh, yeah, they're just... Nikki ji, Noshir ji, 
No, Shirdi, Varun Kapoor ji is probably taking a break after today's live, and he is probably working. Um, he was a voracious reader. Yes, absolutely, amazing human being. Uh, Monica ji, yes, Varun is. Uh, I think he is lives in the uh, west coast of the US, so I believe it is just time for him to uh, get to his work. I believe so. That's where he might be. Shamla Bajji, Nipunji. Um, Yes, I have good knowledge on quantum mechanics. Yes, quantum mechanics. A lot of, uh, you know, metaphysics and quantum mechanics and astrophysics. I mean, I guess he's just uh, Niruben Patelji, Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. Ah, Niruben is, sorry, sir. Niruben is, uh, thank you, Madam G. Okay, so... AI is the future. My husband's current work. Yes, Om Shanti. Yes. Yeah, that is even the line I am in. And uh, yeah, I can see that there's a lot of future for it. And without us teaching machines uh, how to work for us, uh, they're going to be pretty soon taking over. So that we cannot allow that to happen. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yes. And he was always trying to decode some. Uh, you know, equations and all kinds of algorithms and everything. It's just, uh, yeah, so proud of him. Ashtarji, very nice to see you after a long time. To read, gain knowledge, to internalize and then apply it to oneself. Beliefs and learnings to be in the moment and yet go beyond is visionary genius. Wow. Yeah, I guess, you know, putting it into practice. I mean, how many of us actually read and put them into, put stuff into practice? That is amazing. And in one line, if you have to describe Sushant, I think this is it. So I just love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so Gutterwood is just uh, very, very good at uh, stealing, copy pasting, uh, no original thoughts or ideas. So, Chanti ji. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, even I feel like I just want to be like, you know, have company of people like him where you can just like literally look at the stars and talk about it or like just explore our own uh, meta thinking, like, you know, thinking about our own thing. What are we thinking right now? How are we feeling about our past, our future? Like, you know, it's just amazing. Uh, so, yeah, please, uh, anybody has any ideas for how, what we can do to continue this series, what we can do, um, you know, this is kind of a discovery phase, I was, as I was saying, you know, let's just uh, continue this exploring his thoughts and his ideas and his vision, uh, maybe put some of his ideas into action, because one of the ideas that I want to put into action is, uh, whatever little money I make, I want to be able to uh, also use that for my own personal training, personal growth so that I can contribute more. Um, and also the second thing is being able to give uh, free education uh, for anybody who, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, the e inequity, the equity of uh, resources, especially in the tech space. You know, some of my kids have like 10 devices in their house. Um, some of them have like a cell phone on which uh, the entire house has one cell phone on which they're coding. So if you can imagine that, so there's a lot of inequity happening. So we need to, you know, do something uh, for that. So one of his dreams was free education. And that's what I also want to do, um, contribute to as much as possible. So. Um, yes, Monica G. So Sylvia Plath uh, is uh, one of the ladies that I was, uh, the poets uh, of, uh, I believe uh, this might be a story which is at least 30 years old, uh, if not more. Uh, but yes, she um, kills herself. There's some kind of, a, you know, mental health issue as well, because she's kind of a tortured genius kind of a lady. And if you read her books or her uh, memoirs or her short stories or poems, I mean, Sylvia Plath is just, uh, just unbelievable. You know, the way she looks at life, the perceptions that she brings, the perspectives that she brings along with her words, just mind blowing. Yeah. <laughs> 
आई की थिंकिंग इतना घमंड क्यों है भाई <laughs> बॉलीवुड को लिटरली इडियट्स एंड मोर नो क्लू अबाउट एनी थिंग अदर देन ओन देर ओन यू नो वेयर शुड आई गेट माई नेक्स्ट सेल्फी वेयर शुड आई गेट माई नेक्स्ट ड्रग फिक्स वेयर शुड आई गेट माई एम सो सॉरी आई जस्ट डेंट I decided that I'm going to stay in the zone here, a positive zone, and contribute. I just didn't want to like muddle this whole thing and like no, I'm, going, I'm just going to stay happy here in this zone where I am. I don't want to talk about ah, negative things right now. Just feeling happy today. So um, yeah, <laughs> whether his book, shirts, home vehicles, are all were so curated. The thought, the meaning behind it, the mind from beyond. Yeah. absolutely yes and everything seems to be by design right everything seems to be intentional he because he wanted it to be in his life kind of you know the shirt the book the the you know his surroundings and everything of course the people they just lodged themselves into his life without oof again i don't want to get into any kind of negative ideas now just want to relax today feeling so happy about this whole thing so um okay so lonji ji hope you are feeling well that's what monica ji writes uh okay ashnu ji has an idea perhaps we can all pick a book of his choice to read have a discussion once a month oh my gosh that will be so cool yeah i am ready for it uh something to ponder perhaps could be interesting discussions and he and uh, keep away ssr with us and to enlighten yeah i mean that was the whole idea here uh because i was just exploring on the idea that what was so fascinating about this child what was so fascinating about this boy uh that was just like so charismatic so energetic so childlike uh and uh, you know one of those uh, pictures that uh, i was just showing earlier is always like look at look at this one so cheerful and just so chilled just childlike right so i think that is what we lose as we grow we just forget that child like enthusiasm about us and i think this might be the asian paints video but i cannot be sure but yes ashnu ji that can be something that we can do we can uh, discuss or uh, you know if people don't have the time to read the full book or whatever just the idea or the concept if you can just bring um and uh, we can just uh, keep talking about it any any idea like we can talk about astrophysics or if anybody is you know um mi or uh, ml excuse me machine learning or ai i can talk about it um any anybody who knows a little bit more about uh, astrophysics can talk about uh, can talk about that topic anybody who's talking about uh, you know he loves nature he used to love nature a lot so we can talk to people who you know who are in that space so yeah thank you thank you for that idea shno ji neelma ji hello ela unnaru thank you i don't know any one of them okay so yeah some of the books i mean you just have to <laughs> sorry i'm just looking at the next comment here uh thali mein che brain mein bhi dharma ji brain mein bhi bahut bada che hai <laughs> thali me ched oh my god lord okay don't even get me started on that thali me ched wali uska to just i just want to hijack one of varun sessions one day and just like only talk about thali me ched wali aunty ke bare mein because i'm just like sick and tired of her so um i don't know anyone of them okay so yes so yeah i mean see some of the books uh, are uh, Uh, i even i have uh, never heard of uh, some of the books and some of the books i happen to read because i'm just like in that um, you know i have my own life coaching business and everything so i have to be able to involve myself in some kind of a personal development otherwise it's uh, you know i cannot thrive uh, in whatever i've taken up so that's why i know a little bit of these books and luckily enough for me um, this uh, you know the the he is already you know <laughs> so he's already like uh, into all these kind of things which uh, definitely have a long way to go before i can you know aspire to be any of a thinker like him but um so let's just do one more thing just another 10 more minutes uh, if anybody has any ideas 
um, today i cannot uh, do open mic session unfortunately i'm just uh, still a little bit under the weather i uh, just want to take it easy um, so let's just explore a few more things here and uh, we we can keep discussing about uh, every one of them so once again so this is the intoxilectual intoxilectual book club that sushant had created on instagram and twitter where he actually tweets about his own book shelf like the books on his bookshelf his thoughts about them and he also is talking about the different uh, you know uh, people who are recommending him something he retweets them uh, and some of the comments on them are like just so kind and nice and everything you know and that is also part of the charisma of uh, sushant right he was just so nice and endearing and kind to people in his ecosystem or just even strangers like any of us fans who are interacting with him i know a couple of them who um had a great fortune of interacting with him on twitter and instagram and it's just uh, you know it's a lifetime of a memory for them uh, so if you see uh, i think murakami norwegian wood is uh, Haruki Murakami is like this Japanese uh, author who is just very, very widely popular here, especially in America, because, uh, um, and he was also in the running for the Nobel Prize for a lot, long, for a long time. And I'm not sure if he ultimately won it or not, but um, this one is one of his popular books. So, um, and if you can see, Sushant so was equally interested. Uh, you know, some people are biased towards non-fiction. Some people are biased towards fiction. But uh, he was actually dabbling in both fiction and non-fiction. I think that's uh, part of the magic with him. So, again, uh, part of like understanding his T-shirts, his philosophy, his ideas, his thoughts. Again, uh, you know, one of the quotes is, uh, perhaps the difference between what is miserable and that which is spectacular lies in the leap of faith, self-music. So, you know, especially I feel this, uh, it might be very relevant to those of us who are contemplating some kind of change in their life. You know, some of my friends are going back to work after almost 20 months and now again companies are like rethinking their strategy of hybrid work and everything so some of them are planning to quit because they just like the whole work from home environment and everything so there's so many people contemplating so many changes in their life right now at the moment around the globe but uh, you know that is the difference right between misery and what is spectacular on the other side of that threshold uh, threshold ko Telugu mein, it's called Gadapa, but I don't know what it is called in Hindi, if anybody knows. So that threshold is like when you're entering into the house, uh, if, especially if it's somebody else's house and it's a brand new house and you don't never visited, you have that fear before you enter into that, like you cross that threshold. So, and I think that's uh, what he's saying, you know, once outside on the other side of that doubt and that misery might lie what is spectacular so i think that's leap of faith you know you just still trust the whole situation and you just uh, go so um that's a little bit uh let's see once again so we were just talking about this in jailbird he writes i was making my mind as blank as possible you see, since the past was so embarrassing and the future so terrifying. So once again, we were just earlier, uh, we were talking about uh, the greatness of Kurt Vonnegut and uh, what makes, so Sushant, uh, you know, just even before the interviewer completes his sentence, like, uh, who is your favorite author or something, he just says immediately Kurt Vonnegut. And it's like, uh, if you read uh, his books, you'll be able to appreciate why you know he was just so uh let me see if i can pull that picture back um this is the book that we were talking about in slaughterhouse five 
it's one of the it puts one of the mirrors to kurt's uh, one of its uh, writing because he is at the same time he can be present in all the moments of his life and uh, you know um, there is a sideboard thingy yeah this is what we were talking about be present in all the moments of your life so whether it's the past future or the present you are there it is you who is there so um and that's i think what uh, you know whatever quotes inspire of his um, he always keeps mentioning in kurt vonnegut from uh, jailbird I was making my mind as blank as possible you see since the past was so embarrassing so that's the thing with uh, the mind right we are always dwelling in the past and regretting our decisions that have led up to the now uh but we are also jeopardizing our now uh, as we are dwelling in the past and obviously you know even if you worry about the future or not our uh, future is going to be just as uncertain so nobody knows what is going to happen tomorrow so why worry why not be here in the now uh, i think this uh, again you know he's a he was a mindful person and uh, i think that's what uh, that's why I, he might be liking this quote <clears throat> so we talked about uh, this will make you smarter definitely a must read for anybody again this one yeah the marco polo of neuroscience by richard dawkins richard dawkins has called v s ramachandran this and uh, i request anybody um, you know who is into um, just trying to understand the brain or how things work so uh, ramachandran v s ramachandran he is one of the most underrated neuroscientist of the world that's what i personally feel like because you know he's the one who talked about mirror neurons and uh, you know phantom limbs and all that so if you remember what he says uh, if you have seen that experiment where this person is here and there is a oops sorry and there is a window uh, uh, sorry there so he has this right hand and his left hand stretched out and there is a fake left hand here sorry yeah so the left hand is not his real left hand the person is here and there is a thing so if you see i think there is an experiment where he the other person seems to be hitting the fake thing but you still end up feeling pain because of the way uh, you know our mirror neurons work i think uh, not i'm not able to explain it correctly but anybody who wants to check out vs ramachandran's uh, you know phantom limb experiment you should uh, just check it out it's just amazing and fascinating and this gentleman actually talked about it like what 30 years ago <laughs> uh you know and he is just uh, one of the most underrated uh, neuroscientists i feel like um so that's all i really had i just uh, showed in your scat you know these days everybody <laughs> keeps wearing shirts again uh, somebody nipunji i think was saying uh, quantum mechanics ke bare mein he used to talk and everything and i think uh, you know schrodinger's cat it's it, it is that concept that challenges us uh, to try to understand what is reality and what is fiction and you know it's just uh, you know in the end uh, after those experiments did the cat survive or something like that so there are always all these memes and jokes about the showing your cat i was i was seeing a t-shirt um, of somebody's and they said oh, i think yeah this oops one second so they said whether is this a smile from this side or is this a frown from this side so it's like a, is this a, some kind of schrodinger's um <laughs> smile or something like that that's what they were calling it so yeah just uh, mm, the great gatsby is also one of I mean, it's kind of melodramatic and like i don't know it's just uh, too bollywoodish for me 
but um, people might like it and it is actually it it also became a movie and all that and yeah um i think he likes it that's why he is posted okay this is a book from yeah his bookshelf okay yeah yes and this was a movie by leonardo no Le, uh, what is his name again i don't remember yeah so you can uh, check out so this so these are the two links that i am using right now and uh, this is once in a while let's just explore you know all these things and uh, we'll we'll continue the discussion just wanted to take one hour to get us out into this groove and start thinking about uh, these ideas anybody else let's see if anybody else has uh, any other ideas let's see okay um dira ji saloni ji sushant devan intellect like ramanujam the great genius mathematician yeah absolutely and uh, at 33 34 you know he was just scratching the surface you know can't imagine 30 years from now where he would have been <laughs> with just look at his bookshelf or like anything just um very common with military builders yes yes okay oh okay vinita yeah 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 so i'm glad that you are also uh, yes it is the vs ramachandran's that phantom limb experiment is very very popular yeah absolutely and uh, unfortunately we lost ramanujam yeah <laughs> yes saloni ji yeah absolutely absolutely thank you so much everyone i'm just so excited uh, but that you gave me an opportunity and you're here and watching and i really appreciate that and uh, any comments or any feedback please you know you can always uh, my twitter is our future strong i'll just post it here my twitter uh, please any feedback any other ideas so judy gave us saying that we should continue talking about one topic or one book or one concept at a time just keep brainstorming and we can do open mics and we can just like hang out uh don't worry about um, giving me any negative feedback uh, i only want negative feedback because it just helps me grow nothing to take personally it's all good so that is my uh, this is my account my twitter if anybody wants to give any dm me any messages or anything don't worry i also get a fair share of uh, opinions and suggestions and gallies and all that so it's all good <laughs> no problem okay so thank you over and out i will see you guys hopefully next week um, sorry i've been under the weather just trying to manage a few things thank you monica ji thank you for taking value out of this um, i it's just my pleasure and my honor to be going through you know some of his um just um, always like many of us have these regrets of wish i would have known him you know when he was alive kind of a sentiment i have for this child um he had so much potential so okay until the next discussion over and out thank you saloni ji thank you so much you to take care thank you judy ji thank you uh vinita ji says okay so our country needs better heroes and inspiration instead of uh, fawning over some celebs i wish for my country to spend time in books such as these yeah absolutely and that is where we are taking the narrative here vinita so uh shnu ji thank you so much and thank you thank you yes so vinita yes this is also part of the whole uh, changing the narrative here right because uh, the way we are entertaining ourselves the way we are educating ourselves and the way we are engaging um, online we are not just sitting passively in front of a tv or a machine and just consuming we we don't want to do that anymore and thanks to our awakening and thanks to sushant's you know waking us up literally from our slumber we are here so we are not going to go back never ever so um yeah just want to run a few of his pictures and then uh, leave so if you have any take away from here um, please pick up one book that you can see here and just see get some value out of it and uh, see what you can do and implement it and if you can come back and share 
how you have started implementing it in your own life. That will be awesome. Thank you, Dharma Ji. Thank you so much. Thank you. I will um, also start condensing what I'm learning and how I'm putting them into practice in my own life. Um, one thing that I'm doing is um, believing in the concept of free education and, uh, you know, barter system is coming our way. Barter system is, you know, how we traded over millennia, over generations, um, until this concept of money came into the whole world and like, uh, you know, took away the joy of giving each other freebies and just enjoying what the other person had. Um, so, you know, my idea is uh, Sushant's dream of giving free education. So I want to be able to contribute um, in a very small way, however I can, uh, to his dream. So that's where I am putting it into practice. Uh, Vinita says, uh, absolutely, what we watch and hear has a real effect on our mind um, and as a consequence of our, on our life. A conscious decision to spend time in a meaningful way is the key for our future. Absolutely. And intentional living, right? You can either sleep, walk through life or just live intentionally. What are you choosing? So that's the whole idea here. Um, okay. So thank you, everyone, for indulging me. Thank you. Just uh, his handwriting, I mean, everything. I can just keep on talking about uh, this fellow like over and over again. Look at his handwriting, just as beautiful as his mind. So, Secret Principles of Genius. He gave Shraddha Kapoor a book. Oh, Lord. Okay. I hope she read at least one page of it. Well, Okay, I'm trying to not say anything bad. Excellent. So this is not the real uh, Instagram account. That's what I just figured out. But this seems to be the real uh, Instagram account. Uh, excuse me, Twitter account of his. So, oh, the beginning of infinity. We're going to talk about all these in the future. Okay. Plan to read David Christian's The Origin the origin Story. Oh, The Origin Story. Yes, 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 yes. It is actually, hold on. I think I just saw it also here. Oh, I think, okay, sorry, sorry. I was thinking about beginning of infinity. Okay, never mind. So I'm going to make a note of that. David Christian's The Origin Story. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, who actually contributed and gave me ideas and everything. I'm also going to take it forward, and hopefully we'll continue this idea, and uh, we'll also inspire each other in this uh, journey, and uh, whatever Sushant wanted uh, for us, for our collective future, we are going to be doing it. So uh, thanks to SSR. I got interested in that topic. Okay, excellent, excellent. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, um, over and out, guys. Thank you so much. Until next time.